Hey guys, so this will be a British team and 1v1 deck guide. This will probably be the first, this will be the first video in my sort of deck tutorial series. I guess I'll do one for each of these civilizations. I'll be starting from Brit and just working my way down. Um, so let's just get right into it. Um, so I'm going to start with my 1v1 deck. So I've got three fills in VC, five fill, you can just see it here, but I've got five fill, crate shipments, upgrades, military, it's quite military focused as 1v1 decks should be. So three fills in VC, I'm just going to go age by age. By age. So H1, three fills, obviously a very important card, the best card in, in H1. And Virginia Company is just needed for certain matchups where you want to go TP, three fill and VC. It's just a very good build, it's good versus many civilizations, and it makes you semi-FF quite quickly, for Brit standards at least. Um, so these two in combination with the TP is very strong. Now the H2, you've got 5 ill, 700 food, the wood cards, 700 coin, 6 longbow, musk cards, 6 musk, and cap HP. So, these crates obviously high value, except 700 food, but what Brit need a lot of food and they potentially need 700 food to push out to their next hunt because they need to mass to actually be able to do so. If it's like a prolonged H2 fight, which can happen versus a lot of sibs with Brit. Uh, 5 ill obviously mandatory, 700 wood, 600 mandatory, 700 coin mandatory. And you could argue you could only need one military card but I like to have both just for the diversity and um yeah basically that six musk is good for like any cab pressure pressure any musketeer pressure um good for FB wars that sort of thing it's good to have both in my opinion six longbow is good versus like infantry rushes like um musketeer strelet for example or I don't know, Skirm Pike, um, yeah, or like Inca Bow Bo Pike, you know, that sort of thing. They're quite good in that sort of scenario, in a defensive position. Sometimes you want to be using muskets as an offensive shipment, but any defensive against infantry, you want to go longbows. And then you have your cards to upgrade your units to make your H2 very strong. So you've got your two musket cards to make them basically veteran in H2, and then your cav HP, just because... HP is just so important in cat on cav. It's just really nice to tank with Hussar. Now, H3, I've got. Obviously, you can see here, but I've got the eight fill, the uh, very high value resource crates. I've got ten longbow, nine musk, five hus, and two falc, as long as the as well as the upgrade cards. So, I'm just going to start off with the military first. So 10 longbow, it's a lot of value, v very needed um, in terms of adding to your composition. Um, it's just a lot of value and they're very good versus Skirmish Dragoon, which is a very common combo in this game. Um, so it's just a very nice shipment to have. Nine mask is a bit questionable. Um, so if we go to the other shipments available, you have infinite 10 pikes and 5 grunts and 10 jaegers and highlanders. Um, so you could potentially add jaegers instead of 9 musk. Um, but sometimes you just need anti cab and you just need it now. So that's why I have the musk in there. If there was 5 goons, I'd 100% replace it with 5 goons because musketeers are not as good in fortress and it's not really the unit you want to be going. Uh, for example, versus a sib like the Dutch or German, you want to be going Dragoons because versus German you have uh, a lot of Ulans on the field and, well, both Skirmisher of Warwagon and Ulans with Micro do okay versus Musks. And versus Goons, you just need to DPS all those Ulans down quickly from like a, a defensive position or like behind your longbows. Now, um... So in the fight, so that's why I have the musketeers in deck. Uh, with the hussars, actually I didn't really cover 
why I had them in deck, I just said I'd rather have goons. Yeah, so I have them in deck just because you need anti cab now. And if someone's pushing with like, if someone's, if you're going VC semi, for example, when Germans are going like, uh, Dop Yulon in H2 with like 8 bow push, you're gonna need to send 9 musk, otherwise you're just gonna get screwed. If you didn't have them in deck, you wouldn't be able to send anything worthwhile. You'd be able to send 10 long bow, but you, he would just get right clicked in the Yulons and stuff. Same thing could apply to, I don't know, Musk Huss from French. If you send tong 10 longbow, you're going to die to Huss with like muskets shooting at you. If you have 9 musks, you can at least like kill Cav and stuff like that. Um, so that happens like if someone's going cavalry heavy, basically. And you just need anti-cav. Um, and you kind of need unit shipments in H3 as Brit, because you're going to be needing to fight for hunts. But you're going to do your usual boom. And then you're going to cut the boom, you're going to be sending unit shipments, you're going to be sending unit upgrades, and you're going to be trying to go to your next hunt. And Night Musk might be quite useful in that scenario. Uh, likewise with Five Hus, Five Hus really adds to your composition. A lot of Brit players go just Musket Longbow or Goon Longbow, and they just seem to negate going Hussars at all. Which I really think is strange, because your Hussars are so strong, and you have like good shipments, like 4 and 5 hearts are actually quite good. 4 is not as good, but it's still decent. Um, in fact, sometimes you could have 4 hearts over 9 mask. Um, but yeah, that's situational of course. Um, but yeah, some people negate going hand cab with Brit, and you can really exploit that if they're going like longbow mask. You can just go like cab skirm and just destroy them basically. Um, and yeah, if they just added in some Huss, then Cav Skirm obviously wouldn't work. Like for example, versus the German going Skirm Yulan, if you're going like Musketeer uh, Longbow or Goon Longbow, you're just going to get shredded. So having like 10 Huss, e even just 10 Huss would be so nice in the front, just blocking. Because Longbow is obviously very weak to melee hits. You want to get some sort of meat shield, like a Hussar. You could say Musketeers are a meat shield, but... They get so easily picked off by skirms that they're not as good. So that's the unit shipments and sort of the upgrades. Like Musketeer Combat can be nice if you're going for like a Musketeer Falconet composition. Um, it's just really nice to have even for any stage of the game. Um, versus, it, it kind of depends on the Sith. Like if you're going against like India, he's going to go Seaboy Heavy. Or if you're going against Japan, he's going to go Ashi Heavy. You kind of want to have this card always. Um, if you're going against Dutch, which is going to go Skirm Reuter, you want to be going Jagoon Longbow Heavy with some Huss. So you're going to be going Cav Combat, Yeoman over Musketeer Combat, and vice versa. If you're going to go against Ashi, you want to send Musketeer Combat first and go Heavy on Musk Artillery, for example. So, that's the military cupboards. Now it's the crates and the vills. Vills is just to extend that economic lead. If you've got enough hunts in base, there's no reason to push out, there's no reason to go military heavy, then you just ship 8 bills. Same applies to 1k wood. In 1k wood you can drop a second TC, you could get make it easier to get your veteran upgrades when you just send 1k wood first in H3. Um, easy to spam longbows, can get your arsenal techs, that sort of thing. You can get an artillery foundry. That's what the 1k coin is for as well. It's easy to, easier to get artillery out, easy to get goons out, that sort of thing. Coin heavy units. Um, and that's what these three cards are for. They're sort of economic boosts and they're for getting artillery. So having the artillery option and the military option. are just like core unit option. Now, H4. You could potentially use that 1k coin to go FI or semi-FI. And you could potentially go red coat rocket three rocket just to hold the initial push and then whilst he's busy going back and adding coals for example to deal with the rockets you can ship your factories and sort of just chill and then you get a huge economic lead whilst he's stuck in h3 making coals and your h4 going rocket red coat and then adding your own coals of your own for example so that this is just sort of like the standard brick deck it's just so much value from the shipment um you could argue it's questionable that like CM or like I don't know exotic hardwoods or something like that in H2 H1 sorry um, but I like the three rockets personally so let's go to 1v1 anti-C 
Um, so this is where I want to be like more fo focused on land. And if he's gone C, then I just want to do some like pressure with like carded caravels. At the same time, pressure him on land with musketeer artillery or whatever unit composition I like. But musketeers artillery is pretty good versus C a lot of the time because you've got high siege. And they're going to be going like walls mostly. So, it's got your key cards, you've got your, your core card. So, from here to here is basically what I had in my normal 1v1 deck. Just added the boats instead of six longbow and 700 food. If if they're going C, you're not going to be worried about having food, so you don't need 700 food. You're not going to be worried about getting rushed, so you don't need six longbows. And yeah, so you have those cards instead of these. Sorry. You have these cards instead of these, the cards I mentioned before. And then in age 3, I've taken out 5 husks, because you don't really want to go shipping 5 husks versus a sea boom with walls and stuff. Um, and I've added a frigate, and I've added 20% 20, 20 ship damage. I am going to remove 8 fills actually, and add 1k wood. And I could remove longbows as well, but... They, they can be quite nice to add to your composition. And 1k wood's just going to be like for adding TCs, adding frigates, adding docks, um, adding artillery foundry, whatever you want. You could say, oh, you need 1k coin for um, for artillery, but if you're going to be having full access to the map and the mines and stuff, and you've got a good eco, then you should be able to get enough of the artillery out. Um, so that's my reasoning behind it, just to squeeze these cards in. And then obviously H4 is the same, rockets are good versus ships as well. Um, yeah, so this is sort of self-explanatory, you just got the ship cards instead of some unit upgrades. Sorry, unit cards and a bill and 1k coin. So you just got these instead. And you got refrigeration for late game as well. And the wood card for any like prolonged H2 boat battles and stuff like that where you've got to be chopping a lot of wood and you've got 1v1 Forcey taken out Musketeer HP you don't really need beefed up units when your eco is going to be insane so you've got the normal attack cards instead of uh, I'm going to take out a villa again for wonky wood uh, instead of 9 masks I've got whale oil and instead of mask HP I've got rendering plant so this is for like a boom C so this is like full on pressure C, get it back, and then just boom myself. Kind of depends on how much I want to commit to C. Uh, Anti C, you can see I've got no water upgrades at all. It's just to keep him busy. If I know I can't beat him on C, for example, if you're playing versus a port, um, if you're playing versus an Aztecs or something, you want to just keep them busy on C and then just kind of focus land. This is more C orientated. You've got some land stuff in here, but you've got a decent amount of water cards. It's just a nice versatile deck, I think. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's pretty similar to the anti-C, but you've got the eco cards instead of... Uh, oops. You've got the eco cards instead of... Uh, instead of, like, a unit card and a unit upgrade. Which I think is worth it, because you're, you're not going to be worried about having strong units when you've got a way better eco than your opponent. Now, let's get on to the team base decks. So this is my infantry base deck. I've got the core cards, so you've got the early game cards, like the crates, the musketeer upgrades, the vills, the mandatory cards. I've got these exotic hardwoods in there, and that's for any potential longbow stuff. Uh, so if I'm going infantry, you're gonna be obviously going musketeer longbow. Uh, longbows can be quite good if you're staying H2 and you're spamming double racks and your teammate is going goons for example, longbow goon can be quite strong. Um, yeah, so it's just that nice extra wood gathering boost that you might need. And then of course you've got six masks for any potential rush that might attack you or if you want to rush yourself with the forward outpost, you know, that sort of thing. Defend or attack basically as simple as that now you've got some late game upgrades you need this i'd say is mandatory it's really important to have food gathering late game or mid to late game because units are so food heavy that you need it 
you just really need it, basically. You need all the food gathering you can get, because musketeers, longbows, hussars, all food heavy, and all going to be your main core units in your composition. Especially if you're going infantry heavy, they're obviously food heavy. Um, so you want this in deck. Likewise, you want fencing school, you want fast training um, infantry, so you just, yeah, so I have that added in, in there as well. And then AA is just so important for Brit Musketeers. It just car it just beefs them up so much. It makes them faster, makes them more HP, more attack. And it also buffs your artillery as well, which is a very common composition with Brit. You go Musketeer artillery, because longbows aren't so good against heavy infantry, for example. And they're not upgradable late game, so you want to go like speedy artillery and musketeer. And AA obviously boosts the speed and HP of artillery, so it's a very important card for Brit in any deck, I think. Okay, so H3, 8 Vil, 1 King Woods, that's just to boost your economy even more. Um, yeah, pretty much as simple as that. Second TC, um, artillery foundry if needed, like 1v1. Um, even third TC, just drop two TCs from that. Because at, at some point, like Brick, when you're max managed, you'll get to 50 Vils, and then you're just training one Vil at a time at TC. And you don't want that. You're not going to be scaling that well. So if you send 1k wood, just drop one or two TCs with that, and you're just training from two or three TCs with 50 Vils. So it's just going to be quite easy to maintain villager and military production. And that's going to be your strength for mid-game. Uh, likewise with sort of 8 vil, that's just to boost your eco like instantly, you don't have to wait to train all the vils, you just get 8 vils like on the on the field like the moment you send it, so that's also quite nice. Got your military upgrades, kind of self-explanatory, you want your units as strong as possible. You got two falcs, which is mandatory, such a good unit shipment. You got your eco upgrades, which is also mandatory. And then you, this is where it gets kind of like optional and it gets kind of like play style orientated. So two factories is mandatory, they're so good. They're basically like 20 bills late game. Uh, that doesn't cost population space. And yeah, they're just so good. Three rockets, I mentioned before briefly in the 1v1, it's good for holding or pushing. It's just so much value, it really adds to the musketeer heavy composition you really want to ideally go for because they're so upgradable. And 16 musketeers. Uh, so this is the really optional card. Um, you could remove it for 1k coin, plantation upgrade. Um, yeah, pretty much that. And you could even add three horse cannons there. there. But I, I like to have it because a lot, some of the time you have good enough eco to go from straight from H2 to H4. And what does this mean? It means you can do like a really scary red coat rocket timing push. And your red coat's gonna be H4. You're gonna be like. So you've just spent a lot of resources and aging from 2 to 4. You could probably get. You can get away with it because your eco is very strong. And. Um, Obviously, 16 musk has so many resources in terms of military, and if they're on the field, they, you kind of just negate the amount of resources you just, you just spent on aging somewhat. Obviously, you, if you was obviously got the 1k coin payback from the age up, but you're also going to be shipping 16 musketeers or three rockets, and then you're going to be shipping the other one after, and then you're going to be taking red coats, and then you're going to be pushing out. And then you have like this sort of window to do a lot of damage. And they've got to go back and make calves, for example. And that whilst they're doing that, you can send factories and take the map back. So it's all sort of little strats you can do. Um, not just your typical greedy play. Go plantations and mills in H3, send your plantation upgrades, stuff like that. I'd rather just get H4 quicker sometimes. Just put your factories on coin or woods make it easier to get those guard techs or just more TCs up with the factories on wood or just more artillery with the factories on coin, you know, whatever you want. So that's the reason why I have those 16 masks just to, for any potential FI plays. You could uh, take out 8 vil 
for 1k coin. But you usually have enough resources to go straight industrial, and then you can just ship 8 bit or in transition to H4. If you really want to be greedy, you can even send two Falks to hold whilst you're aging with the Musketeers you do have already whilst you're training uh, in transition to H4. Um, or the ones left over from H2. You know, that sort of thing. And then you just, with the two Falks, you just send 16 Musk first, try and hold with that, and then send rockets after, push out, send factories after that. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. So, uh, let's go on to Team C. And there's also one Team Cab deck left, and the rest is Treaty, so that's irrelevant. So, let's go to Team C. Um, it's not a heavy C deck. I've got one eco upgrade, I've got two boats, and I've got the wash upgrade as well. So this is a mostly a land orientated deck, but if I do take control of the sea with my team, I can still boom on it. I can still add like a whole bunch of boats on whales with 25% gather rate. Ideally you want rendering plant because it's 30% instead of 25, but the H2 of Brit is just so stacked, I just can't ever seem to fit it in. <coughs> Sorry. So that's why I have this card over rendering plant. And yeah, these it's basically similar to a land deck, but these cards have been replacing uh, the Musketeer card. Uh, Musketeer attack, you obviously keep the HP because it affects your entire team and it's still 15%. So it's just a very good card to have. And I don't have AA in this deck. I might change that actually just because it's so important. Um, but this is what I mean, it's just so stacked. There's so many optional cards, you can even just take out Calf HP for AA. Yeah, that's probably better. If you've only got one upgrade card, hmm, it's just, this is what I mean, there's just so many cards you need as Brett in H2. Like you need Musketeer Attack, you need Cav cards, you need Mill cards, you need AA, you need Warship Upgrades, you need Rendering Plant, there's just so much optional stuff, it just de uh, determines, determines like on your playstyle. Um, so this is what I'd probably have. you got Cav Combat for any Cav later on, and you got like the Musketeer HP and Advanced Arsenal for later as well. So this is like the sort of deck you want. You want exotic hardwoods for any boat combat, any longbows you want to train, um, that sort of thing. And now, last but not least, my cavalry deck. And you can see there's been quite a big difference already. So no exotic hardwoods. I've taken that out for the plantation upgrade. That's 25%. <coughs> Excuse me. I've also taken out one of the musketeer cards for cavalry damage. So this is my Goon Hus orientated deck. So the Cav cards in H2, if you don't know for Brit, they affect Dragoons as well as uh, Hussar. So you're going to have very strong Dragoons and very strong Hussar. So I've gone for that route. I've also still kept Team Musk for anyone going Musketeers still. And I've still got AA for, you know, the potential artillery and Musketeers ultra late game and that sort of thing. Um, Mill card all these like food coin cards rather than wood because you're going to be not you're not going to be making many longbows you're going to be going dragoon hus and obviously dragoons are quite coin heavy so that's why i've added this extra plantation card here um i've also added 1k coin for any goon spam or age up or you know adding artillery with your goons a common composition is goon falconet as the goon player because Hussars are not always ideal because there's just so much rain to fire that Hussars need to be like um, You need to have like a critical mass of Hussars to make it worth it whilst if you just ship 1k coin you can train like three Falks and then you can just go um, Even with two Falks like a total, total of five Falks plus your Cav Combat Goons for example is a good push Or a good hold if you want to get H4 you know that sort of thing kind of depends on the situation but um I prioritise my cav cards. I could potentially put riding school in, um, but honestly, I'm not really sure what I can take out for riding school. And to be honest, with the church tech, 
cab trains fairly fast anyway, so you, not fully necessary. And yeah, the rest is what I've explained before, through rockets to hold or push, factories mandatory, crates obviously high value and good for adding artillery or TCs or getting expensive techs. Um, and yeah, the rest is sort of self-explanatory. And yeah, that, that's my brick guide. I will moving on. I will be moving on to the Chinese in my next video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, and peace.